Well, welcome to Face to Face with Jason Lee. Great to have your company. Lee, let's get straight into it. The election looming, the woman's vote, uh, entirely crucial, isn't it? It's important. I mean, let's face it. I mean, you've got these people, the main parties I'm talking about. I mean, obviously, they're going, they're going to be going for the... Um, the, the race vote. Woman vote important as well. I mean, let's face Rightly it. important. I mean, a few years ago, not many men would have voted um, for Helen Clark purely mm. on, on looks alone. Mm. Uh, I dare say John Key, may he may be getting a few um, women, those swing voters. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a charismatic man. Who knows? Yeah, um, he's very easy going and he, he's not unpleasant to look at, is he? No, I mean, I feel Godfather, he, he's, he's not unpleasant. I mean, mm. not like Helen was. I mean, in the sense, mm. the stricter sense, I mean, she got there purely on, let's, let's make no bones about it, purely on her ability. Absolutely. And um, you've got to give her credit for that. Both parties seem to be identifying, and a lot of have done research on this, which is good, mm. is that, um, and, and don't get me wrong here, is that women aren't as intelligent as men. Well, it's interesting because an associate of Darwin's actually proved beyond any reasonable doubt that women have the same parts in their brain as a man. They just choose, They just use them differently. So what they're saying, they've got all the lobes, all the different lobes in, mm. in the brain, but it's it's all arranged differently in a way. It's a bit like, uh, it's like a house. Everyone's got the same furniture mm. or, or appliances, but they've kind of arranged them differently within that house. A man would have the couch etc. In, in the lounge, the fridge and the kitchen. Women yep. are saying perhaps may have a lot of those, uh, you know, the fridge might be in the lounge or it's just, it's arranged differently. I mean, it's, it's fun, mm. well, but it's just not as uh, Functional. Yeah. Um, well, you know, but, but, but having said that, I mean, women's brains do have added features which allow them, to, for example, to communicate better with babies. You know, and, and, that. that's, and, and men don't have that capacity within their brains to do that. And so therefore they've got more space in the brain area, to which upgrade. allows them to yeah. upgrade yep. and to use it in more practical sense. Okay. So you're saying like a, a man's brain is a bit like a, a computer with some space in it. That's right. You can actually get upgrade programs, files mm. and, and boost, boost that intelligence. They can build on that where a woman's brain um, from an early age is pretty much set. Yeah, uh, in concrete, excuse the expression, but yeah. pretty much what you see is is what you get. Well, if, if I could be so bold as to liken uh, a woman's brain to like a car dashboard, okay, um, you know, and they've they've got all the features. They've got the stereos, you know, they've got the impact warning alarms, they've got the hazard lights, they've got the nav men, um, but they just can't drive. Or, 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 or you could argue they've probably got too many features. They've got all that stuff, but they still don't remember to put petrol in it. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, yeah, same. And a man's brain is, is like a stripped down dashboard. All it really needs yeah. is the uh, rev counter, perhaps, and the petrol, uh, gauge. the petrol gauge. And we, we have an innate sense of direction, so it's not such an issue having all those things. Now Research has actually proven, too, that, that, that women don't actually lack. In intelligence per se, what what they are lacking in is in work focus intelligence. We could be getting slightly off the topic here, but that might be why most of the major inventions and advancements in in, in, in history have probably come come from men. Mm. You know, people like mm. Edison, these kind of people, they focus long enough on an idea um, until they get it right. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm just going to bring it back to myself if I can. I, I play Trivial Pursuit quite a lot. Mm. And I, I, I win most of the time, to be honest. And very seldom will, will a woman beat me. They have. Yeah, well, and, and that's the reality, is that, is that woman sometimes will beat you in Trivial Pursuit. But that at the end of the day, Trivial Pursuit was actually created by a man. Yeah, because I never thought of it that way before. Mm. Well, the problem with women when, when you're playing Trivial Pursuit is that they end up sort of chatting and sort of nattering mm. away. Distracted. And they get distracted. Or a guy will focus on until yeah. they've solved that problem. Yeah, work a woman, focused intelligence. Just, exactly. Uh, and on that note, uh, Lee, recently there was uh, um, some research conducted where this two sexes were put into separate rooms to work through some cryptum factor type problems. Uh, is this that research done in Denmark, was it? No, 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 the Vector Arena. Okay. And interestingly, the first time through, the groups completed the tasks in about the same time. The second time, there was a telephone in the corner of each room. Right. And as you can imagine, the results were, were, were significantly different. Okay. Uh, and what they found was that with the telephone in each room, the men completed their task in a faster time than before. Which is interesting. Yeah. Whereas the women failed to complete their tasks at all. And by the end of the experiment, many of them had fallen out with each other. Backstabbing. and Yeah, backstabbing. The, the telephone was too much of a distraction, obviously. Okay. And that's what that work focus intelligence we were talking about. And they needed to communicate. And in some cases, they over communicated to the extent of backstabbing yep. and falling out. And, well, that's and that labeling. baby brain again. You see, that yep. brain, that's... That, that's designed to communicate with babies um, 
over communicate in a way. Mm. Mm. Um, so although they may they're no longer with the child or with babies, mm. that brain is still designed to communicate on a multi. That brain is still filled up with other stuff. Okay, so, so what, what, what do they gain out of all that? Um, well, scientists aren't sure what to make of it. Okay. Um, early days, of course. Um, we are, of course, talking about the, the, the election, um, the important votes, the woman vote we, we've been talking about here. The young voters, mm. young couple mm. out there in love, perhaps. 18 um, to 34 demographic. Mm. Um, where are they going to be putting their votes? Where are they going to be? Who, who's best going to serve those people, I suppose, is what we're going to be talking about today. They're struggling to pay their food, and that's a big issue, you know. And, 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 and Let, let alone the wedding. Call. Well, that's right. <laughs> I mean, for example, you know, the wedding is a classic sort of uh, scenario where whereby, you know, young couples could perhaps be looking at saving a bit of money. Do you say take the wedding dress, for example? Classic. I mean, I can't think of anything um, other than, say, perhaps a condom, dare I say it, that you'd probably use once and just discard yeah. like that. Like and, 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 and I'd say a heck of a lot of people, um, you know, wouldn't be married if they didn't. If they had have used a condom, you know, so they would have linked <laughs> the, the two. scenario there for sure. Yeah. I mean, but you know, I, I, I think back to my wedding. I mean, I did save some costs. Uh, I, I wasn't trying to be like a tight or anything, but um, you know, I had, I had been to a few weddings by the, by the time we got married, you mm. know, and I'd, mm. I'd seen where people spent their money. And obviously, you're going to have to hire a suit. I obviously use Frank Casey, yeah. as I always do for all my, yeah. all my stuff. Um, with the groomsman, Frank mm -hmm. Casey. But I thought, what the hell? Why not just um, get married in Frank Casey's store as well? Mm -hmm. you, use Frank Casey's And thereby suit combining, as combining the, venue. The, the venue and actually the suit hire at the same time. Because, of course, you'd be paying less for the hire because you'd be, you would be well, wearing actually, for less amount of time. Well, you're not actually taking the suit out of, out of, out of off location. You're actually using them there. Yeah. Um, you know, you spill some wine on Jake, you just swap it. Well, that's you know, right. Swap your waistcoat. And how many times do you get, you know, you're getting ready for a wedding and you lose a cummerbund? Yeah. You know, and or you've a got link. your or, or a cufflink, you know. Fantastic. But I just want to get back to what you said about the wedding dress. Yeah. You know, it it, it it can be a phenomenally expensive exercise for what is essentially a one off, you know, scenario that's that's only ever worn. In months, most cases. In most cases. And and actually what I suggested to my wife, which is what and, and she thought it was a great idea, was that we go to a costume hire place. She thought it was a good idea. She thought it was yep. a good idea, and she was keen. And um, you know, at our wedding, she actually was dressed up as Xena Warrior Princess. Okay, so you themed it. Yeah, and she she's never looked more beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah. You're not together now, though, are you? No, no. We broke up a couple of years ago, but it wasn't that that it wasn't because of that. Really, my wedding, you know, at Frank Casey Suit Hire, mm. and one of the stipulations that Frank had to be there. Um, right. Okay. He okay. he didn't actually marry us, but yeah. he was actually because he doesn't have his. Um, his license, he's going for it. Yeah, but so he had to be there, standing by. So he's actually in the wedding party with me. So oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, he and, was one and, of my groomsmen. You know, for the money you save, having one extra guest, you know, do the economics. Yes, yeah. I mean well, he's not really a guest though, is he? Because it's his venue. Mm. I mean, mm. if you hire a venue, the venue manager is going to be there anyway. Mm. So, so Frank was there, um, mm. wearing one of his suits, obviously. You know, mm. and we all just off the rack, get married. You know, um, and these are the sort of the costs. Um, that you're going to have to um, think about to maintain a fulfilling marriage yeah. and indeed sex life. Well, that's right. And, you know, it's not just about the wedding, is it? There's other stresses involved with marriage, which I believe at some point you've touched on in some of the uh, some of the DVDs and so forth that you did with your... Um... Yeah, well, <laughs> as you know, I've been doing a DVD series uh, mm. about how you can best get the most out of your marriage um, emotionally and, of course, sexually. And um, I've recently released a new, um, it's a tape, audio tape series actually, it actually comes out in C60s. And basically it's called, She Can Wear the Pants, as long as I get into them once in a while. And basically this, this, this tape series basically helps you through a lot of those issues. I mean, it goes on about the erogenous zones, um, all the sort of stuff you, you'll, you'll need to know when, when you're married as opposed to before you're married, because sex does change once you're married, and you, you mm. know that probably better than anyone. <clears throat> I remember um, you telling me about tapes five and six, and you know, the, uh, the, the importance of combining emotion with physical touch. Yeah, that's on uh, tape five and know. six. It's, tape seven, I think we touch on um, one night stands, that, that kind of thing. And tape eight, it goes back to taking your time. You've got to remember when you're making love to a woman, perhaps um, making love to her nipples, you're not trying to tune in a shortwave radio, if you know what I mean. Mm. Take your time. Um, it's really building up to the election now. It's getting um, closer to the time, Jace. And one of the big issues, I suppose, is small business. Mm. And um, both parties, both major parties, of course, are going to have to do everything they can to try and um, swing that vote their way. Well, I certainly know it's a, a subject leader's dear to your heart, being a small business runner yourself. And and, and speaking of which, how's, how's your DVD 
Sure. If you're just joining us, um, I've been running a DVD um, business. It's a Kama Sutra type thing, um, a Kama Sutra course, um, helping you to get the best out of your sex life, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been going fantastic. It's sold out now. Right. Um, so what we're doing now, we've released a new DVD now. It's a whole new thing. It's a whole new format. But it won't DVD. just be you in this one? I oh, know the second one, I've got partners in this one. The first the first one was a solo, um, that's called Karma Sutra Masturbation. Mm -hmm. um, the second one is basically I, I bring people in and already the people, critics are saying it's a lot less self-indulgent than, than the first one. We basically got about 165 different positions there yep. that you can try, some for the more experienced, some for the from, for the less confident, I suppose, yeah. Mm. Do I know that you're, yeah. for a very supple guy, for a big guy, you're a very supple guy, flexibility would be a big a big issue in terms well, of, of... Well, it certainly is. And that's what we've learned from the first DVD. With, with this one, we've actually got some bonus features in there. Mm -hmm. There's a stretching routine yeah. um, involved in there. Um, there's a bloopers showreel. People like that. <laughs> they don't, do. They, they, they like to see the humanity. For myself, you know, I, I, I find when I'm making love with, with my wife that um, a lot of the time I'm playing for time. You yeah, know, you're, you're and, and, and yep. I'm just... I, I What I like to call playing for time before I do my big power play. Which is your 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 big position? Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. one thing that you you like your power play move, and that that I like, and that I, I'm pretty sure my wife likes too. That I know, you know, he, here we go. This is the one. It's it's all on for young and old, and we're going to get. Well, there's the two schools of thought on this. I mean, I mean, you can, as I say, there's 165 positions there. Um, we don't expect everyone to just run through those in a night in a routine. I mean, under stopwatch conditions, we had some of the, the top um, porn stars even trying to do that. They couldn't do that. Mm. I mean, uh, it harks back to remember the Kennedy assassination. Mm. Um, after that, they had those guys trying to replicate the, sure. you know, the three, four, five shots in as many seconds, and whether they could do that or not. Mm. Same sort well, of thing. Well, we got the experts. You're not going to be able to do that. You know, you obviously don't want to be in a situation where you're making love to your partner, having to look at cue cards. You know, you certainly don't want to be doing that. Mm. But on the, on the other hand, you don't want to be going going in there underprepared. Mm. I mean, let's look at. Just imagine you're like, uh, say, the All Blacks backline move, for example. Mm. And you just come in there fresh, going with the flow. You just go. You're just doing what you want. Everyone else has got a game plan, and mm. you're just running with what you want to do. You're just going to look like the Keystone cops out there. Mm. And that's the last thing you want. Uh, certainly, if it's a one night stand, you won't be going back in there again. Because we are, we are in a sense talking bedroom action. We're not talking test rugby, are we? We're not. But having said that, I mean, look at the World Cup. Sam Donald just came in, didn't he? Uh, not even in the squad, and he came in and 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 did superb. Um, just joining us, we are talking about um, small businesses um, for the elections. Um, yeah, pretty much. If people were interested in getting that lead, that DVD, what would they need to be doing? They would need to contact the the um, the website or the address below, and we could hook you up with the DVD. The first one, unfortunately, our Calm Suture Masturbation has sold out, but the, the new DVD, uh, which features partners, um, plenty of those left. So. Or, or I imagine they could just give us a call here at the studio and talk to our producer would be... Fine. Uh, this morning we're talking with the, with the uh, election campaign coming up, asset sales, a big issue. It certainly is, and I'm going to tell you straight out, my, my, my father, for example, was a long-time Labour voter, uh, ex-coal miner, um, but he's dying to vote national this time. Mm. One thing that is putting him off is this asset sale thing, he just can't see past that. I mean, mm. he's saying, have we not learned from the past, it's never, it's never worked in the past, and why would you get rid of stuff? Um, why would you get rid of this stuff and then buy it back and, and all likelihood in a few years' time for, for probably twice the price? You know, and, and, and uh, it is a big issue for this country. And I mean, just like the other day, I was cleaning up my garage and I noticed that uh, I had I got a cross-trainer machine, you know, uh, which I've only used, um, well, I don't think I've ever used it, um, apart from for a couple of infomercials. Um, but, you know, um, and I've used it to sort of uh, churn butter and it's got a clock on it. So whenever I'm in the garage, I use the clock on it to know what time it is. And okay, I, so just paint a picture. This is the machine, which is like... Um... Yeah, it's like it's like you sort of... I don't know if you've ever seen a cross-country skier. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, very, yeah. very similar to that sort of scenario. Oh, well, funny you should say that because I, I, was, I was in my garage um, the other day. We haven't been a clean out as well, mm. uh, as you kind of do before Christmas. And I came across a set of old um, cross-country skis, uh, oh, wooden okay. ones. Uh, they're my grandfather's. Right. Yeah, yeah. He actually served in um, Montgomery's um, cross country ski platoon, uh, mm -hmm. North Africa, taking on Rommel. Um, right. These and are the desert. wooden ones. Yeah, these, yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are <laughs> these are the obviously the um, old wooden ones. These are from the forties, obviously. Mm -hmm. For those, I think they'd be worth quite a bit of money. But look great on a, a ski lodge or in a bar or something yeah, up there, a bit of a you know a man cave or something. Just while we're on that note, I also found in my in my garage a baby cot, um, a baby change table, and a baby grand piano. Oh, which yeah, I'm yep. prepared at this point to um, to offer as, as a group to sell off. You're a, selling a, as a set, are you? Selling, selling it as a set to anyone out there that might be interested um, uh, because none of my kids showed any musical ability. Well, yeah, yeah but I mean, the 
baby cod or the change table hasn't got vomit and all over it. No, it? no, no. But the baby grand has. Um, so we, uh, I actually got a guy in from Steinway to hose it all down. But as you, as you well know, Lee, if you look inside a baby grand piano, it's a pretty complicated. Oh yeah, I mean, because kind you get of the jet wash, you're jet still going, you're not going to get all that out of there. Still bits and pieces. And, and, piece and, sure. and actually, just as a, as a side thought, I've got a little, a, a little um, piano stool which I'll throw oh, in yeah, free right. and yep. people buy the whole set. You so. wouldn't sell the stool by itself, though, would you? No, I probably, I would prefer not to. Okay. Um, would you but, sell the piano stool, perhaps, say, with a change table? Though? Yeah, I could do that, but I'd prefer to keep it all as just the one. All together, all the four bits. Keeps it, keeps it simple. I've seen we're, seen we're trying to get rid of stuff. I might as well take the opportunity as well. We're trying to get rid of um, a Persian rug. Right. A large, you know, two metres by two metre Persian rug. Fantastic. <coughs> um, a lot of, I've got to be honest, it's a reluctant sale. I mean, we've got a lot of fantastic memories with that rug. Mm. I actually um, probably conceived at least one of our, our children on that. Oh, well, that's <laughs> impressive. Well, certainly, it's, considering it was actually hanging on the wall at the time, it's one of those ones that you, you tend to, you can either hang on the wall or put on the floor. I've got you. Um, but, I mean, it's a, it's a fantastic colouring to it and a great, a great um, knit, great thread, I think, is the, the word for it. And, and it's, as I say, we've got a lot of fond memories. And if, I mean, I mean all, all the, if you think of all the Persian cats that went into making that, um, mm. which we were part of the family, as well it really is a reluctant sale so i'd love to see that go to a a, a good owner uh, um, if, if people want to uh, uh, and are interested in um in in those sales and this contest uh, contact us here at the studio and we'll, we'll look forward to hearing from you uh we're talking elections we're talking politics the big issues of course one of the big ones is going to be the the gap mm. between rich and poor hey no right. but what is glaringly obvious i mean I mean, the rich list came out just not so long ago, right? Mm. The Graham Hart, 5.5 billion, okay? Mm. Um, on the other hand, what's coming out um, next week, we've got an advanced copy here, is mm. the, the poor list. Yeah. And um, that makes it interesting reading. You've got to remember the poor list um, pretty much celebrates those same people, mm. those people mm. which mm. have mm. greed, drive, mm. hunger, um, but have an innate ability to turn a sure winner into a sure loser. One of the one of the interesting ones on the um, uh, on the poor list was a guy by the name of Hamish Gimble. Oh, I know that you've heard of three. Hamish. Yeah. yeah, he came in at number three, and he was a, a property developer who um, lost seventy seven million in his first year of trading. Yeah. Which uh, because uh, the problem with Hamish essentially was that he had an innate ability to buy property high and to sell low. Yeah. Which is uh, as yeah, you it's know, it's always going to get into debt straight off, isn't it? Absolutely. He was borrowing a lot of money in his first year setting up his business often from himself well, yeah he was borrowing from himself and charging himself a high rate of interest just to prove that he was a bit of a mover and a shaker yeah. he was buying property high at an auction situation and then often selling that same property at half the price at the same auction this very same auction he just bought mm. it at well actually you know and, and, and Hamish's whole philosophy when he was speaking to the Financial Times to Graham Wood and uh, uh, and I, I've got it here I think and, and Hamish said to um, George Woods I live by the mantra, if it looks too good to be true, then it probably is. But what the hell, there is a chance it isn't, and I would hate to be the guy that misses out. So I think that pretty much sums him up and, and why he found himself in such catastrophic financial Well, we all know those kind of people, don't we? Um, mm. the, the, the type that don't want to miss out. And it, it brings in the, the number two, I mean, Colin Churchill. Uh, this, is a, this is obviously, everyone knows the story. I, I probably don't need to go into it. But um, Colin Churchill, of course, started up Faxbook um, response to um, Facebook, the, the phenomena, yep. the computer phenomena. Um, Graham obviously started this in response to... Um, that particular well, for situation. people that are basically scared of computers, basically, yeah, still, yeah. he wanted a communication network for mm. people. Started up Faxbox, so he's got thousands of people around the world, millions. Well, mm. that was his aim: communicating by, by noisy fax machine, sending photos, chatting, etc. And um, apparently, I mean, the costs of setting up are astronomical. Mm. But he was getting um, charged sixty-five million a year. It says here mm. um, in fines for gross paper wastage. An yeah. average Faxbox user with just three hundred friends yeah. could use up to four tons of paper a year. Yeah. Okay. And that's Alone. not e and that's not even talking about the ink cartridges that you'd be an expensive thing. That's not even sending photos or anything. Mm. That's just that's just your basic sort of chat. Mm. It's, it's no surprise that the um the technology magazines dubbed it ass book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that's pretty much well deserved, you know. And it, I mean Steve Rowling, right, for example, look at this guy. He was uh he, he was selling off all of Walt Disney's merchandising rights, the Star Wars franchise and the whole of the Beatles back catalogue. I mean, what went wrong? Well we didn't own him, did he? I mean you can't you can't just go sell stuff you don't own. You mm. know, this was a guy from Tekuidi. 
mm. with his wife Carol, mm. just living mm. there, um, semi-retired on a farm. You just can't get online and drag this stuff up and then mm. go out there in the public market and start selling this stuff. Yeah, well, because if Walt Disney didn't even didn't even know who this person was, did they? No. They never heard of him. No. So I mean, the lawsuits alone from those people have certainly mm. put him right up there with um, the top mm. of all those other guys on the poor list. I mean, it, it doesn't help either that he was. Um, a startup um, venture capitalist in um, in Facebook mm. as well. So, um, Jace, what are people talking about? Well, of course, uh, one of the big uh, big headlines in the paper today, Lee, is uh, banks pushing democracy to the limit. Oh, I yeah. found this other article which has been very interesting on Chappelle Corby, a uh, very oh, interesting case. In Bali? In yeah. Bali, yeah, the, dr- the whole drug smuggling thing. Um, you know, it's uh, they've written a book about it, which is... An attractive woman. Um, and let's face it, she took a risk and she... Paid the consequences. Uh, she paid the consequences. I mean, I... I Let's face it, man, I knew a couple of guys a few years back, back in the 90s. Um, little things like, like Lego, for example, was extremely expensive mm. um, to, to bring into the country. You know, you could buy it here at this price or you could get it overseas and bring it in. From only China, so, if I recall. Yeah, there's only so much you can bring in yeah. um, legally. I knew guys that were actually smuggling that, um, smuggling Lego into the country mm. um, inside them. Basically Lego mules. Yeah, yeah. Um, as you say, they were bringing in entire cities, and and as you mentioned before, your friend who yep. you know obviously caught onto it pretty early. Well, well, he, yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day, he got so good at it as a smuggler, he was able to bring in a whole Lego pirate ship up his backside. Right. You know, that's that's how extreme it got. I mean, yeah, obviously, but, it wasn't built. You yeah, know, bit by, but piece yeah. by piece. It's well, I, I recall, um, you know, with the whole um, Lego mule scenario that they were resonating in the '90s with regards to Lego that there was probably enough Lego being smuggled into the country to build the entire wall of China. Scale. Like, in scale, maybe yeah, like okay. one to three, not the actual, okay. but one to three. It's still a hell of a lot of Lego, no, which, of whichever way you look at it. Lego blocks. It's a lot of Lego. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think it was a spaceship, not a pirate ship. Uh, oh, if I remember, a space station, sorry. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, Chappelle, she's going to be there. I mean, I'm, I spent a bit of time in prison in France and the... Mm-hmm. In the mid '90s in Leon, um, um, I don't want to go into details. A bit of a sort of a visa technicalities, and um, make no secret of that we were there. Um, this, this sort of pretty staunch kind of place. Not for the not not for the sort of amount of time that that poor old Chappelle's been in there. Oh no no, it was like um, thirteen days. So yeah, it was uh, an interesting time. I, I might as well come out and say best sex I ever had though. Oh, were you allowed conjugal visits? And um... no 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 no. Um, Pretty much looks up with uh, all the time we've got for this this episode. Yeah.